Hello everyone and welcome back to Eldrius Plays Pacific Drive, where I'm just coming back from the trip that I said I'd make. Excuse me. <laughs> what? Um, and some interesting things happened. All I, look, look, all I did was I went to this unknown place uh, here. This was a question mark. That's all I did. I went to here and then to here and then we came home. And throughout all of that, we discovered a new... Anomaly type, which is the bunny. And I got a healing hair from a friendly dumpster. What an amazing trip this has turned out to be. Um, and we got a whole bunch... Of, oh, by the way, they don't come back with you through the gate. Um, we got a whole bunch of lore that I was not expecting, so... I don't know if you're listening. A while ah. ago, you asked me why I cared so much about the remnants. It's because... Some of the, you know, the starts of those have been cut off because I didn't anticipate it. Um, but I, I've added that to the to the game here. But now we're, we're back. There's one more thing. I can't remember what it is. I'll add it in here and then you'll know when I won't. Look how fast this rain is charging my battery, by the way. We should definitely get an electric engine. Um, but now we're back and this... Blinking thing opened itself when I did something. It 
It's this again, isn't it? It's this again. And I think that's a brand new complaint. But well, this is unreliable now. What does that mean? Let's find out. So, you can close. Right, that door opened. Oh, no, it's... It's open again? It's open again. Am I a thing that can go in the... Right, that's shut. We wait a couple of seconds. It's open. Right. So, the only thing that's happened is I've been sat here. That's made a noise. This didn't change. This has moved to look at me. But yeah, look, it's telling me the door's open. So, let's see what our options are. It's a good start of the episode, isn't it? Uh... Um... Uh, <laughs> Trunk wipers. Well, I wonder if uh, is closed and is opened are the only options. So let's have a look at this. That did it. I didn't do it. So it's when the driver's door closes, which is the front left door. Front left... Oh, for goodness sake, I keep doing that. Front left door is closed. Uh, trunk opens. Yes. Well, that was easy. That only just showed up, and I've already figured it out. Uh, no fix available. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, mechanics kit and glass shards. Right. Do I have to pick up the glass shards? That's really annoying. Uh, mechanics kit. Oh no, it says it might have said zero one before actually. Might have already done it. Right, fixed. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Any, more like that, please. But right, I also realised oh, that I <clears throat> finally, my voice is finally breaking. Um, I forgot to put in the final dumpster pearl and deal with all the rest of this. So I'll just do that now. Um, we all like to watch this, so let's watch this. What, what smashed? <gasps> Olympium torch. Nice. And what, what's this? Oh, it's a jumper. Okay. Uh, and. I'll get all the stuff out there. I'll see you in a minute. Well, it turns out I picked up another dumpster pearl from the friendly dumpster that gave me the health bunny. So, let's eat that in there. Whoa, what? Magnetic hammer. What am I being given? Starting off this episode without any of you being here to watch has been actually quite fantabulous. So, you should be not here more often. And since this is beeping, let's have a quick look. You hear about what they found on the moon? No? Yeah, they don't want you to hear about it. Pfft, they found Mary. They don't want you to hear about what happened on the moon. Nothing happened on the moon. On the moon. Now, I did put a bunch of stuff in here, but then I went on a quick trip, so all of this is fixed. But I've replaced everything. Oh, there it is. Um, I've replaced everything with... i fixed everything, basically. Um, I replaced this with an insulated panel because I had three lead plated and then I put my new bio headlights on because these were insulated headlights. So I thought, why not put insulated here? I've got armoured here and here, lead plated here and here and then I can have my shiny amazing headlights there. So I've done that. Um, not really done anything else since you've been gone. Uh, except for this lore piece that I found apparently. Which we can look at later. And I've learned, I got a little bit more lore from finding those new uh, car decals that, you know, not the most interesting of things. Right, so we got plenty of, we got, we got some talking from Oppie and Francis. Who was left? Oh, I keep forgetting which ones. I think Tobias is the one that might have got got, and uh, Francis is the one we've been talking to. Stop that. Um, 
but I'm hang on, I'm getting confused by how to do this. Drop that. Drop that. Pick this up. I don't know how bad this is for being unreliable, so maybe I just have to put it into drive manually every now and then. Um but I expected I didn't expect to get any voices from them. I thought we wouldn't get that until we'd completed our Explore the Deep Zone mission. Um but we got more lore from them anyway, so I think maybe we do another journey. Uh, the reason I did that is to get more limb for figuring out what these are. So look, fuel is low. Just, just tell me. Lots of things happen. Five hints. Car. Jolts forward. I've the, the feudal doesn't get low. I I don't do that. Oh. I see. So at some point the car jolts forward, but we don't know what combination of the other things causes that. So the radio, 2.5k then. Switch on, switch off, toggle stays on. Alright, let's, let's play with the radio and see if we can work that out. So... One of these things... Actually, do you know what? Let's look at the options. Fuel getting low is not it. Luckily. What else can the fuel do? Nothing. Uh, the dome light could switch on, switch off, toggle, stay on, stay off. The trunk could... be empty or full and the car jolts forward. Like, do I want to bother with trying that? Does it need to be on? <laughs> I don't know if the car needs to be on to do that. It's not very really interesting anyway. Uh, you have that and that. So I can't really be bothered dealing with these things because they're not currently a problem. We could try filling it up, but like, who cares? Um, let's go out for another journey and see if we can get a new uh, quirk that we can then diagnose uh, more easily uh, and not worry about it. And do we want to learn anything in here? I think perhaps maybe. We've got a lot of corrupt limb now. We wanted to learn... Oh, we need to go and get all this material, though. That's the thing. Look, limb magnet. I need that for this. But I've... I think you can probably only get them by magnetising them at the place. Uh, yeah. Limb magnet. Found in smokestacks and unknown. I found it in the smokestacks. I made it in the smokestacks. I don't think I found it. So we do need to go to a few places. I was going to learn, I remember, the the thingy that helps us find... Uh, ooh, I can make those now. There was something that helps us find... Like a radar for, for materials. Resource radar. We've learned it. Where does it go? On the roof. Ah. Ha ha ha! I haven't installed that roof right. Just chucking things on the floor like they didn't cost me a huge amount to make. Uh, roof storage. Roof whack. There we go. Please install roof whack. Please install slightly broken resource radar. Oh dear. <laughs> We're going to be a wreck. Uh, anything need particular attention? Could probably poke the blowtorch at a few of these to just finish them off. Let's do that. I did do an experiment to see whether the limb shield would protect you from all uh, anomalies. Because it seemed to me it would be great if you just turn the limb shield on, go and grab your anchor, and then if anything spawns underneath you, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I still got left-righted. Um, because... I, in the last episode, we had the thumpers, or what they're called, spawn underneath us and yeet our car halfway across the world. In this, whilst I was out there getting some normal, boring, old-fashioned limb, uh, I got electricity spawning on top of me in, an, uh, <laughs> in, in a shocking speed zone, so my car just yeeted off without me. It's basically, things keep happening that make my car not be there anymore when I'm trying to get the limb back into it, so I thought maybe we could just turn it. doesn't work. It doesn't protect you from everything. Um, but it might protect us from damage caused by that stuff. 
Uh, also, you can't make these um, flare launchers in our car. Although maybe we can get a level two. Um, maybe we can get a level two thing in our car. Is that an option? Mobile workbench. Yes, but I need to need to learn jump jacks first. <laughs> Why? Oops. Oh, ion shield is. That sounds good. Ion shield. A far more effective solution than a wall of lead. This field of charged particles captures and effectively neutralizes even the most energetic ionizing radiation. Power hungry but life saving. I mean, I don't care. But it does mean we can get to the workbench in our car, which means we can cr probably means we can create level two things. <gasps> Olympian fragments. You cheeky sod. Nitro boost. Interesting. Duke jet. Joyously join this jet to your car to juke, jolt, jump, jab, and jitter into a joyride. You'd be justified to be jazzed. Don't get too jubilant, or you might jumble yourself into a jest of a jam. Yes, but what does it do? <laughs> I think we've got what we need. Let's go to the. Let's go do the mission. We only need to go to the dark zone at some point, um, and then we can come back and have done it. Every single entrance into the dark zone is... <laughs> Do you see that? You have to go through extreme conditions to get into any of these. Including that one, because you have to go through this. Or this. That's naughty. They like to do this to me. And frankly, I think it's preposterous. Um... No stable exits. That means we can't go through it, I think. Does that mean we can get to here? Or does that mean no gateways? I think it means no gateways, because we know we can get from there to there. We can't get to this one. Dead end means you can't go further, and you can't get out by gateway, I assume. Uh, I wonder what the clock means in the top right. Look, there's a clock and some unstable limb. It's okay for unstable limb, but clock? Is that how long it takes to get the storm in? Or how long it takes to get there? This one's got high unstable limb. We should do this one. Let's have a look at our... Uh, look at the journey we have to make. I'm going to be here for hours. <laughs> so I'm going to be cutting a lot out of this episode. I'll tell you that for free. Look at that nonsense. <laughs> what a thing is that? Do I have to set it up, by the way? Let's double check that. It's probably a case of... Um... Yeah. Scan the area around the vehicle for materials. Yes. So if I press shift... Ooh. Ah! And it stays on the screen. That's the... Um... That's the car that's always respawning in the back that we haven't looked at for... A very long time. Oh, hang on. Bye. So we've got a long way to go before we can create our electric engine, but we really should... Try to. ASAP. That'll be good. It's just because of how much energy we are currently capable of actually generating. It's ridiculous. As long as we're moving, or basically anything else is happening, things will be good. There's something interesting. Let's see what it has to say. Again, it doesn't say log. Maybe it's because log is this. Sadly, that's about where the cold, hard facts end. Listeners, I tried. I really did. I started my investigation in the usual fashion, digging up every piece of public record I could get. The paperwork is maddeningly typical up until 1955. Census records, soil samples, weather reports, hands-on survey maps, the beginnings of satellite photos, all readily available for anyone with the patience to walk themselves into a county office. But those materials don't tell me much, and <laughs> I quickly am forced to turn to more dubious sources. 
Before the downing of multiple passenger planes and the subsequent establishment of the no-fly zone in 1962, crude aerial photos are taken and circulated. This is where things get interesting. I find fuzzy shots of what appears to be entire mountains relocating overnight, buildings disappearing and reappearing at random, and lakes filled with water or light, depending on the time of day. The revolution is dubious, making them ink oh. tests in their own right. They are the stuff of dreams among amateur investigators and conspiracy theorists alike. The most outlandish, improbable, and extremely unverifiable stories came from breachers. People rumored to have jumped, tunneled, hot air balloons their way through the walls. If they're to be believed, there is much to be uncovered. But more on that later. Limb technology is not paraded around in the press for long. As the government withdraws acknowledgement that it ever existed, the public's interest similarly begins to wane. Last verifiable activity is an exodus of ARTA employees from the zone, beginning in 1981 and followed swiftly by a full decommissioning of the zone in 1987. After which, 1987. 600 square miles are sealed away and left behind with no explanation. The tomb, minutes away from the populous, perfectly normal city of Seattle, with decades of history and secrets locked inside. And that is where I'm left to fill in the enormous, ill-defined gaps. I didn't think this was even set as late as 1987. So how long have they been here? <laughs> the Oppie and that. Man, just more and more questions. Every time. There's another one in this place. Alright, next part of the story. Give it... Dr. Ophelia Turner was a real person who grew up there, and limb technology, claimed to be her invention, was the reason the zone was created. The facts point to either the pursuit of limb or the technology itself doing something terrible to the area, and maybe even to the people who stayed behind. For such a vast, valuable area as the Olympic Peninsula to be lost to the world for the indefinite future, someone needed to take the fall. The evidence in this corner paints the target square on the martyr part of this equation. Or did Dr. Ophelia Turner know what she was unleashing upon her homeland? If she did it willingly, then she would have been a monster. But if the government strong-armed her into it, then she would have had no choice but to become a martyr. To answer that question, we need more information still. I mean, now I think about it. I feel like maybe the... Uh, excuse me, how are you zapping me? That's not allowed. Um, ow. I forgot about these things. That's really annoying. Um, it does feel about 20 years is about the right sort of time frame. Between... You know, some of the logs that we've been finding are about 1967, right? And those are in the past, definitely, compared to now. Uh, those are still talking about early limb technology type days. So, 20 years after that, I mean, these people, I feel like they said they've been here for 20 years, right? So that doesn't seem too bad. Um, but that was when it was shut away completely, right? That's when they actually sealed the Olympic exclusion zone. So that's when that wall went up. Oh, so the timeline has completely thrown me because I thought we were in like the mid 80s now <laughs> we're really really not like, we could still be in the present day especially with the time shenanigans that go on in this zone now, they think they've been here for 20 years but maybe they haven't maybe it's been the same 20 years over and over again and outside it's been 40 I wonder if we'll ever be able to get the facts to this reporter. She's definitely, um... 
on the right lines, I think. Okay, now this is the zone, this is the area that I... Oh, there's another one here. I put the uh, resource finder on my car for this place. Now, we've got turncoat, which I don't like, and we've got fuel, we've got fuel evaporation and swift storm. This is a bad place to be. Uh, but there is another... radio to listen to, so I'll probably bring you back when we get to that. Turn this on in case you decide to activate yourself. Yeah, you're doing that. Did you steal something? Maybe not. Oh, there is stuff. Nice. nice, nice. Whoa, look how much you get. Is that how long it stays available for? Like how long it tells you about it for? No, it's just still going. Oh, it's just a car. Oh, right. Look, car, car, car. Fuel, handy. Stop it. And they've switched off now. Okay. That's good. None of them. Haven't. Look. They're fading out, but they're still. Oh, okay. That. That's uh, frogs. Being peddled as the greatest threat our nation has ever faced. The answer is you don't. This is Frequency File, Episode Three. Hang it. Human cost. Oh yes. Last episode, I reported all the cold, hard facts I could get my hands on. If you missed that episode, here's the summary. It wasn't much. Now we jump tracks to the stories of the people to knit together old records and eyewitness accounts to form some fabric of the true story. Whoever's job it was at Arda to suppress stories did a really good job. What they did to keep that sheer number of people from talking and then to smear the stories that did come out was a masterstroke of obfuscation. Unfortunately for Arda, the cases that made it all the way to court became public record. And the facts were these. Arda played nice at first with a generous relocation package. They offered cold, hard cash and built sprawling housing complexes in nearly every state to resettle the former residents. These new communities were built as idyllic, white picket fenced neighborhoods where you were sure to be surrounded by all American families who shared your same values while enjoying the benefits of government subsidized grocery stores, school Oops. districts, and manicured public parks. Not a bad deal for the looks of things. When it came to the holdouts, the people who wouldn't leave for any amount, things no, were thank ugly. You. <laughs> but in the end, the government won out, as it always does. And while the government has the sovereign right to seize private property, the Fifth Amendment mandates just compensation be paid for it. But it doesn't specify when or how this compensation be made. And many dissenters ended up with nothing through good old loopholes and bureaucracy some of whom are still pursuing their claims to this day. But the chilling thing is, those Ooh, left more. empty pockets consider themselves lucky. There is a saying they mutter amongst themselves under their breath. And at least they had the luck to not live in Sierra. Right, this next place is the deep zone, and it has a meteorite medley. Now, I don't know if we can come home from here. Uh, we might be able to, in which case we've done the mission. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, things are getting unreliable, to say the least. Our uh, auto parker is, ba is not working anymore, that's for sure. I've just realised this whole time, I haven't had a spare wheel in my... <laughs> And I can't make a... Yeah, I, I forgot to put it back when we actually used it that single time ever. Um, so we can't... I haven't got enough materials to make sealing kit, but when we do... We just need some rubber. A little bit more rubber. 
and then job done. Um, okay, We've got extreme conditions here, but it seems to be fairly safe at this point. Let's just go and find some rubber, I suppose. Uh, and let the wheel hopefully not completely destroy itself on the way. Classic mistake. Might be able to find a wheel on another car. In fact, let's, uh, let's do this. There's a yeah. There's another car nearby. Can liberate the spare wheel from it temporarily, and then what do you got? Anything? Yeah. Oh, actually amazing. Not a fan of that. <laughs> Not a fan of that at all. You can just live in the boot. That's brilliant. Just completely solved the spare wheel issue in one fell swoop. We could wait for the fuel to get low and see what the pro oh come on, see what the problem is. Which might be uh, not something we have a choice about. This this aiming at me. I'm sure of it. Yikes! Getting a bit... Getting a bit... Getting a bit... You know... A bit friendly there, mate. Watch yourself. Let's uh, mark this, because it's the next... I can't believe how many of these we're getting. It must be like, hey, you're running out of game. So you better listen to all of these before you actually don't have the opportunity to do so anymore. anymore. Ooh. A chasey thing. Should we do it? I mean, it's not worth it. You don't get anything good out the end of it. But maybe... Maybe the uh, rewards will be better in this area than in previous ones because there's better stuff in them. Our car is getting wrecked by this stuff, by the way. Hey! We've only got one headlight. That lighter must have nicked it when I thought I was safe. Oh. I see. That's the way through the wall. So I have to do this the other way. <laughs> yeah, just watch that. What could go wrong? Let's move away. Oh, jeez. Still going on. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. This is making a lot of people very unhappy. Get off it. Blacksmith. How? What have you done to my car? <laughs> How dare you? Oh god, all of my car is broken. Put this up. Get out of here. This thing has much more of a range than I thought it did. I'm better. Right, look. Oh jeez, it's still doing it over here.
What? Why can't you do it? It's all broken. Can't do anything. Right, let's just try. Turn this up. And just run away. <laughs> I did not expect this much. Oh dear. I didn't expect to have to reopen the wall, you see. I thought we'd just be able to go through. Let's go over here. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> We might actually be in some serious trouble right now. I can't get us out of here because the wall's in the way. What hit me? I can't fix my tires well enough to drive around properly. This thing doesn't have any. Oh, it does. There might be some rubber in here. At least we can fix one or two of our wheels. Turning into rubber? No. Hmm. Burn the sap crystals, but I have to put magnets in. That's a downgrade. That's an extreme downgrade. No, no rubber. Hmm. Running away. <laughs> ah! Whoa. What shit you? Maybe we can get through here? We'll do this thing again, huh? No. What is this all about? It's already open. We just have to follow the right bit of it. Gotcha. So we've... Okay. So we've made it through the wall. <laughs> Maybe we just drive through. Hope for the best. All this because I was trying to follow these and, and play the game again. But it's just because we're at the wall place. These things are still here from last time. It's not the same. At all. Tires? Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> Watch it, you. Wheel there? Tire there? There it is. Right, you get off. Give me this. One. Put it on. You get off. Where's my other one? Oh jeez, you're still going with that. This one? No. No. Yes. Put it on. Oh, that's already... What? How did that get on? You're just wonky. You're... Mm. Fine. <laughs> Whatever, let me out. Put that. Get in the car. Phew. Shut the door. I've got a missing wheel. Oh, I took that one. Oh, no. I accidentally took the wrong one off again. That's why. One of these is okay. Not this one. Okay, this one's wonky. I'll do. Probably fixed it now, actually. 
we could heal ourselves as well. Put it on the... There you go. Get this. I know. Radiation. I know. Just a smidgen in there. There we go. Right, put this away. Get out of here. Can even use the arc doctor. There we go, a bit of HP. Phew! It wasn't ideal, but we're here. The door's still open, apparently. The boot. The boot. The boot. The boot is on fire. Might even get a bit of limb on our way out. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I didn't like this zone at all. Whoa! There was some clutch uh, flipping. Oh, not electrician. Those were some clutch wheels that showed up, huh? Can't believe it nicked my blinking brand new flipping light headlight. Right, no limb from that. No, Not many resources, actually. It just got a little bit too scary. And this one's high in stability as well. But I think the last one might be permanent stability. So we can chill out when we get there and see what we can find. I never picked up the thing either, so we're going to have to get this one from here. Light ambient radiation, exhausting explosions, and a swift storm. Okay. And apparently an open flipping boot. Oh, it's broken, not open. Okay, yeah, I knew that. Don't worry about that. Oh yeah, open is when it points the arrow at it, not when it's got a diamond on it. That just means it needs attention. Well, we're going to get a lot of... Look how much water, uh, how much electric we get from the rain. It's brilliant. Whoa! I'm guessing light ambient radiation just means the whole place is irradiated all the time. Not ideal. <laughs> Not the best. What are those? Whoa! What's it, you? Can do this and drive at the same time. Oh, we didn't mean to do that, but at least we've learned. <laughs> wow! Olympium! That's what we want. Magnetic hammer! I've got one of those! Put it in your hands. Thank you. It's hard to harvest. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it's gone. Nice. This is a quick one. I think the Torbus might actually be spawning the Taurus really fast. Well, we knew that was going to happen. Okay. Moving on. Lightning, why? <laughs> Does it help? Not sure. Does it hinder? Not sure. I think we've fared pretty well considering how badly the last the the last zone node area went. Um, the game 
Give us and the game take us away. I'll tell you that for free. I keep saying that. Maybe it's not that great of a phrase. It's okay. Um, you know, it, it put us in a position where we lost our tyres repeatedly because of very scary things. And then it went, but here's some more tyres for you, so don't worry about it. I wonder what they are. Did I just park in front of that? Maybe. Just a dust bunny. Okay. Of the witnesses to the Sierra disaster that are still alive, most aren't willing to speak to me. One eyewitness account remains the most damning report of what happened. Meet Lou Arganza. She was nine when she last saw her parents alive. You were born in the zone. Yes. Born and raised in Sierra Town until, well, until it wasn't a town anymore. Lou was evacuated from the zone on February 13th, 1973. Can you share what you remember from that day? Sure. I was at a week-long wilderness camp. This yearly thing my elementary school would put on. They'd throw the kids into the woods, show us how to pick apart, animal dropping, sketch birds, you know, things like that. Hey, that was a short one. Where's the rest of it? It did not happen. People have escaped the zone, though. Good on them. Well, you escaped and I got sucked in, so it's a bit of a karmic balance, I suppose. Whoa! Well, you know what? If you're just gonna yeet that thing straight in my face, I'm gonna <laughs> take stuff out of it. <laughs> ah! That's very helpful of it. Lots of repair juice in this now. So if we do have, which I believe we do, a, um, a perpetually stable zone coming up, we can just fix everything with all this stuff that we've been given. Then we should be able to grab... I think we should drive along here. Seems quite flat. Get a bit of limb and leave. Whoa. Once again, the limb shield does not protect you from left rights. I think it just protects you from damage and those same things that the limb emitter. The limb pulse emitter would save you from. It's a decent amount of stuff. But not left right. It is not perpetually stable. But it's extreme conditions, apparently. If you say so. <laughs> I will be fixing this up for the next few minutes. And remember, we have to leave from here via a gate. But we were given all of this stuff for free by the zone. Why is that one red? I'll do. Right. How's the car looking? Fairly good, considering. Right, we're up here. Make a gate there, we can make a gate there. Everything else is gravy. So we might... We should get some limb, I suppose. Oops. Oh, come on. Let's try this again. We should get some limb. Let's follow the road. See what limb we can get without feeling like we're in incredible danger and if we feel scared we can uh, open the gate, pelt towards it and ignore everything between us and it and then fix the car when we get to the other end because that's how we do things. 
there's a couple of um, unknown anomalies, number anomalies around here, which we should endeavour to identify. I'm not sure I care about looking in these places too much. I notice there's no tape here, so we don't need to worry about that. What have you been hit by? Explain yourself. You just rode, uh, you just drove over a log. Since you're here, my tr are my headlights actually different colours? No, I don't think so. It just looks different because it was given. Don't know. Yep. So we have concussive explosions. Is this stuff? Ex is this a thing to look at? No. It's a bit grim though. <laughs> this this zone is definitely corrupted in the uh, in the doom hellmouth sort of way rather than what you'd expect from science. Well, that was opened by science, I suppose, in a sense. So, yeah. There's creepy stuff growing everywhere. Oh, an actual dumpster. Why is everything bashing me? I don't need blue paint. I also don't need to go up in a thing that is irradiating me, so... Count me out. Right. Oh, I'm out of fuel again. We should look in these cars. I keep forgetting to stop the cars. Let's um, press this button and see what we get. Car, car. Don't know. Car. You're an explosive bunny or something. I don't like that. Because I'm supposed to scan you if you're an explosive bunny. See if you've gone away forever. I think you have. Okay. Well, we found an anomaly, but we don't know what it is. I mean, we know what it does. We just don't know what it is. I think it's not concussive explosions. It's explosive concussions. I think that every time I run into something, it causes a bit of a bang. So we should be careful not to. We've been quite um, lackadaisical in our discipline for bashing into... Oh, there's a tree. That didn't count, apparently. That's good. I was going to say it sounds like I've got a flat tyre. I think I might do. Stop giving me flat tyres, game. I do have an unreliable tyre. It has shown its unreliance. If I get exploded. It's quite hard not to crash into things a lot of the time. They are very much positioned to wreck me. Take all the limb I can get. Thank you very much. And then we'll leave. <laughs> I may not be all the limb that there is, of course. Just all the limb that I can manage. Very different thing. We need more fuel. Push this and see if we can find a car. There's one. Corrupted car? Harder car, I see. So I wonder what happens when the fuel gets low, because it did. And nothing seems to have changed significantly. There was another car or two over here, wasn't there? You will notice that in all of that, my battery never really went below 60%. Despite all of my uses of everything I could get my hands off to save my life. Um, not turning the car off and, 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 and pressing the 
shield every now and then and all that stuff. I was just charging it all the time from everything. It's brilliant. I'm really wondering how much power, therefore, the actual electric engine takes up. Because if it's not too much, it's definitely a no-brainer. Kev. Right, where's your fuel tank? There you are. Why is the fuel tank just an external barrel? What could, it's got armoured everything, and yet a perfectly explodable tank. Put it inside at least, under some more armour. Wouldn't you? Isn't that what you do? It is, it is what you do. Right, we're going this way. In fact, let's um, put a mark here. Look. I hope that's the storm I can weather, <laughs> so to speak. Oh no! <laughs> Might have guessed. It is not a storm I can weather. What? Man, these are impressive looking things, aren't they? I'm going to drive against it. Oh, Olympium. Come back. So that it passes at the same... <laughs> it goes that way and I go this way. Um, another bloody blacksmith, isn't there? How far away from these things do you have to be? Right, I wonder if these are telling me that I'm in range of the blacksmith. I honestly don't know, but I think they might be. We need to pick up the hammer. It's a very scary thing, that blacksmith. It's the blacksmith. It's got such a massive range of earth tremor that it just yeets everything up. <laughs> Sending all of my... Look at that! What is this? Taurus trap? Watch out, you. Okay. Okay. We're going to try... No! Stop that. Fix this wheel for a start. What's wrong with you? For goodness sake. I can make another one. Um, try and get the limb that's over there. Uh, use some more of this free stuff that we got to fix our car a little bit. I'm worried about leaving the car near the blacksmith. <laughs> Just do it quickly, I guess. I think the blacksmith run out. It seems to have stopped. Now I can see it going. Okay, never mind. It's over there making its noises. Fine. At any point we can go. <laughs> Just need to figure out how to. Ooh, watch it. I have actually managed to get all the limb if I go this way. Get this last bit. Yeah, it exploded on me. I don't know how I'm going to scan that. I'll tell you that for free. Tell it again. I noticed, don't worry. Keep saying it. Let me uh, get rid of that. Right, there's the last bit of limb. To destabilise the whole place with. I suppose the way to scan... Because most of the bunnies so far, if they miss the car, they just sort of sit there like loonies. Gosh, this stuff is purple. <laughs> Go like that. Quick, scan it. Oops. 
It wasn't even there, man. Right, and then we open this, <laughs> I suppose, and drive like Billio. Not into a tree. See you soon. I think we're still in the exploded place, so let's not hit too many things. Uh, slightly terrifying. I think we can probably make it fairly safely, actually. Except I'm not crashing into anything. It is right there. As long as we don't hit something and nothing books the ground and, um, beneath us and sends us careening off into the distance, uh, ruining everything horribly that way, we should be fine. I think we're going to be fine. Ah! Apart from the barrier. <laughs> Why is there a barrier stopping me leaving the road at that point? Of all places to stop me leaving the road. We're fine! I was worried about nothing. That last bit of the zone was actually quite easy. We managed to avoid getting completely wrecked by a blacksmith. We managed to get all four limb anchors in that zone, even though I didn't think I was going to be able to get to any of them. We've had a whole bunch of resources, two, two patches of Olympian. We're rich. Look at that, 9.6 corrupted we got. 0.4 unstable, the unstable level. Was the hardest. Oh, here's a red light. Look. We've got a red one. <laughs> That's weird. Right. We're home. Welcome back, everybody. I have no idea how I'm going to cut that down. That was an insane amount of everything. I just drove over this, but luckily it still works. All right. I think we did okay. Did I turn it off? Yeah. Wow. I'm good at this. Fish that. I wonder how many we've got now. Seven. <laughs> there are seven things wrong with this car. Um, okay, I'll deal with that off camera because I didn't notice any anomalies, uh, any quirks with the car while I was driving around. This was really handy, so I'm glad I got that. Um, we've lost the rainwater machine, which is pesky. Hydro generator. Oh. Five, we've got five swamp coral. Where did all that go? Oh, that's the stuff that grows in the lights. We can go get more of that. Um, can't make an ion shield. Need more tree candy. We've got to go to that one place to get tree candy. You remember that? All right, we've got this back. Thank you. And let's have a look at this. Idea. Kids TV show about anomalies. Something that demystifies them, makes them friendly and approachable. Possibly do it with puppets. Do not mention the Mount Walker Massacre. What do you think? Call me, 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 me. Propets! Okay, what's in here? In. Um, this is a big thing. Devices limiter and overloading its charge capacity. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> so no matter how much energy so like those words. blasted with, the arc will be able to overpower it to open a gateway. It's the only way to extract the driver from whatever's going to happen at the trigger point. And then we use Alan's suppression technique to keep the whole thing from completely exploding. This sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does. Arc device mods looking good. Now you can head out and overcharge it. We'll give you instructions when you're en route. Sounds great, thanks. Right, so. Ooh, why is my mouse not working? 
Uh, I'll repair things off camera. Some of it can go in there. Actually, most of it probably doesn't need to. This is looking fine. Uh, let's have a look at the... We searched the barricade operating station. How can we make anything? Hang on. It could be Olympian shirt. Is it the height to present protection against explosive damage in the zone? That would be handy because I just got exploded at. Uh, we've got... We've got, we've got 20... We've got 40 Olympian fragments. Look, this... This seems like a better use of Olympia, sorry. Because radiation is everywhere. Anyway. Uh, Logbook. Let's have a look at the lore dump. Olympian vein. Partial memo, source unknown, circa 1967. First created in 1944, alongside Americium and Curium, Olympium similarly remained a state secret. But while information about other transuranium elements was gradually made public, knowledge of the highly unstable Olympium was not. This was in part because it took some time for scientists to confirm its existence through additional testing, and then because further research on the element continued only on the Olympic Peninsula under strict ARDA supervision. Oh, there's more. The first isotope created had a half-life of approximately nine seconds, similar to Hassium, and the initial applications were extremely limited. It wasn't until the isotope 01266 was accidentally created by a limb tech team working for ARDA that the practical applications of a strong and relatively lightweight metal were considered. Olympium alone has limited use outside of making heavier transuranium and transactinide elements, but the possibilities of alloys using 01266 have intrigued chemists and engineers. Since its discovery, knowledge of Olympium has remained closely guarded and it was believed to have only ever existed in laboratories at the University of Chicago and on the Olympic Peninsula. However, after the events of 1961, 0126 was occasionally discovered in small above-ground deposits within the zone. The causes of this distribution remain unexplained. I don't know whether Olympium is an actual element. Meteorite Squall. The first time that giant rocks fell from the sky, zone scientists believed it to be a freak meteorite shower. It was only when these events became more common that it was apparent their origin was not extraterrestrial. The course has never been determined, but the rocks continue. It does actually pose a large question. From things to fall from the sky as a result of a zone of instability on the ground? They must be spawning up there. Tourist trap. Private field notes Dr. Everett, date unknown. It would seem that, with the passage of time, many anomalies evolve through a kind of synthesis. The constant rearrangement happening within the zone produces new combinations of previous oddities. Some are one-offs, others endure. These gigantic monstrous amalgams are amongst those that keep reoccurring. They appear to be formed in part from the spontaneous columns of rock that erupt out of the ground, which we've seen, in part from those test dummies that themselves seem to have been previously combined with a cache of missing claymores. Ah, that's why they explode. Gotcha. What strikes me most is their remarkable coherence. Clumsy as they are, and almost as, it's almost as if they serve a very deliberate function. As if they were designed, perhaps for some defensive purpose, some deterrence. And this ongoing synthesis has me wonder if the zone is not only in a constant state of flux, but perhaps even in a state of evolution. <clears throat> evolution? Even deliberate experimentation? Red spires, that's where we were, apparently. Which makes sense, because there was really tall mountains, and then a lot of hot dust on top of them, so that makes sense. Fallen Firmament. Answer phone message transcript. Origin unknown. November 8th, 1968. Do you ever think that maybe all this wasn't such a good idea? Look, I'm just saying that today I was chased by some kind of giant Thor. My car door was dissolved by a blob of acid. And now I'm calling you to report another chunk of rock dropping out of the sky. Last year we expanded the zone even more, while also doubling down on the long-established government's tradition of quietly covering up all the damage and disruption we've caused. And this year my job has me providing constant updates on how all the new land we seize for Arda is warping, changing, and full of things that might well kill us. This project was so different when Turner was in charge. It felt like we were just trying new things. Then it just became about chasing money or Arda secrets or the government trying to pretend they didn't screw up so much. Anyway, gotta go. There's more rocks falling from the heavens. I'll try and call you again later. Happy hair. Journal fragment date unknown. Over the past year, I've seen anomalies cause all manner of chaos. I've seen them dismantle Arda facilities, dissolve trucks into puddles of goo, even tear human beings apart. 
I've seen the fruits of our labours turn one of the prettiest parts of the country into one of the most dangerous and unpredictable. But this week I saw the first sign that things might change. I caught a rare glimpse of hope. Perhaps not everything we unleashed here, in this gigantic cosmic accident, has been bad. We've logged several sightings of a new anomaly. At first sight, it matches the description of so many others, but this one is different. It actually repairs things, apparently seeking out damaged material and regenerating it in a way not dissimilar to some of our own prototype technology. It is benign, even friendly, and I'm starting to wonder if it even communicates. It does seem to. Blacksmith. Transcript taken from briefing by Dr. Niraj Patel, April 20th, 1967. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, everyone. I'm well aware the military has plenty on its schedule. My assistant is passing out summary reports, but should you require more information, I have extensive in-depth data collected over several years of research on a wide variety of phenomena here on the peninsula. My specialty has been what we have broadly categorised as geological anomalies, and today I'd like to update you on what many of your soldiers have been calling the blacksmith. Within just a couple of weeks, the anomalies have already caused extensive disruption and a great deal of injury. They've demolished buildings, they've brought down transmitters, they've forced vehicles off the road, the damage done has already run into the millions, and all of us soldiers or scientists are acutely aware of the costs we're accruing and equi equipment we're writing off. I'm hoping we can pool our experiences and best practices and save one another a lot of stress and harm. So I'm hoping we can find a pattern to this latest anomaly, the way we sometimes have with others. Second, I'm hoping we can find a way to predict and even avoid these. Let's start by reviewing some witness statements. Dot, dot, dot. Again, I'm hoping that you can sort of see you can see where the things are about to sprout from it doesn't help if you're in a car and i can't figure out how far away it is light ambient radiation a noticeable level of ambient radiation has been detected in this part of the zone it will be harmful to spend time outside of your vehicle exhausting explosions in this part of the zone damage suffered from explosions will also take its toll on both fuel and battery reserves brilliant concussive blasts the remarkably strong explosions experienced in this part of the zone are powerful enough to bypass car defenses oh so even though I was just breaking things, the fact that it was constantly hurt, maybe it counts as an explosion. I don't know. Meteorite medley. Meteorites from an eternal meteor shower are forever falling in this part of the zone. Olympian fragment. This might have once been a more conventional metal. Either prolonged exposure to elements and anomalies in the zone or deliberate experimentation has changed it into something quite different. It's firm, it's light, it's slightly warm. Could be excellent in an alloy. So they only show up in the smokestacks, which is the last place we were. So we have to go back to the right places. <laughs> magnetic hammer. Since it was first held aloft, the magnificent magnetic hammer has been the ultimate symbol of power and might. Smash the environment into submission. Claim what is rightfully yours. We've got a new door, which we found for free. Thank you. Acid. Through your door. It's more likely than you think. Slow that acid down with a network of reactive sprinklers primed to release a fine alkaline solution. Drive with the confidence of someone who knows they aren't about to dissolve. I don't even know. Look, there's a whole unknown section. What are these? Oi, the jump in the music is because I sneezed and cut it out. Jump jacks. These are nothing to do with aerodynamics and everything to do with brute force. Jack hammer-like power will make your car airborne for a brief moment, but be aware that this was not designed with consideration for either comfort or safety. Or, nil do I want to do it. To be honest with you. Overcharger arc mod. The limiter has been removed from this arc device, allowing it to channel far greater amounts of energy. It'll be essential for the journey ahead. Refine. We can refine limb chips. This integrated circuit was carefully constructed using limb tech. It will be the keystone in so many advanced devices. Somebody should patent this. Equipment. Radiation suit. The full body solution to radiation is a snug fit. It has to be to make the deadly air around you much less harmful. You should still avoid lingering and radiation for long. Lots of things to learn. Bobbleheads. Verti. Probably doesn't have very much processing power. Grace Wind Phil. Did you hear something? I don't get it. Shifters. Shape shifters. Tool shifter. Sometimes you just have to make do with whatever's on hand. And an arrow shifter. Full speed ahead. Okay. Some of these might be cool. Pnu love sticker. Honk if you love the pnu. Mountains, forests, and hikes in the rain. What's not to love? Lean on that horn. I haven't put any stickers on, actually. I forgot about them. Decals. Not today. Say no to the big stink from those big feet. I wonder what that looks like. <laughs> Don't know. Right, that's everything. 
Um, I've got things to fix, but I don't think I have anything left to do on camera. I did that. Uh, and we could look through there, but I'm not going to do it this time. We can do it afterwards. Let's see what our next trip is. So we have to go right out there, which doesn't... It does have permanent stability. We can hang out there, but then we probably have to go over there. Which might not. And we have to go through this. Let's learn about some places. I'll do that off camera. I'll learn about some Zone 2 places. Get some more... I really need more swamp coral, and I need, really need more frog spawn, um, I think. So I'll learn about some of these, um, and then we can plot a route to here that doesn't involve going through incredible instability. These are still not cooled off, by the way. Very naughty, horrible places that should just chill their beans. Is And this is where I just left from, I think, so that's... Again, I think they're unstable because you leave through a gateway, but some of these are just permanently unstable. Well, Sierra was permanently unstable. Well, this is Sierra. Sierra's fine now. Anyway, I haven't really got much more to say. Um, I can't be bothered figuring out any of these because again, I've just spent all that time driving and not seen a single issue, so I'm going to ignore them. Um, so until next time, I'll thank you for watching, and I hope that you'll join me in the next episode, where I guess we'll continue to progress the story, but until then, I'll see you. Bye!